Alright, so this is going to be a quick video on uh, altering this formula, which uh, you guys have probably seen before. So first I'll explain what this formula does. Um, let's say there's a question that gives you a cross. So here we have a dihybrid cross between uh, two loci that are heterozygotes at every loci. So big A, little a, big B, little, little b times the same thing. And uh, we're trying to figure out the number of possible phenotypes and the number of possible genotypes. Now in your book you guys have seen uh, this kind of formula where the number of phenotypes that is possible is supposedly 2 to the power of n where n is the number of loci that are involved in the cross. So there's one loci, there's a second loci. So 2 to the power of 2 is 2 times 2, so that's 4. So there's 4 possible phenotypes and then the genotype can be, the number of possible genotypes can be derived by this formula where 3 to the power of n is going to give you the number of possible genotypes. Same idea. Um, in one of my discussions, and actually a few of them, I'd been asked how you alter this when at each individual loci uh, it's not a heterozygote. So we're going to walk through all four possible uh, combinations and see how that affects this formula. So, okay, here we have, um, first off, let's talk about this, which is the formula that uh, you guys know. It's the one that I just talked about like a second ago. So here we're crossing a heterozygote, big A, little a, times another heterozygote, big A, little a. As you can see, there's a few possible, uh, there's two phenotypes and three genotypes. Why is that? Well. The three genotypes come from here. That's one, dominant dominant, so homozygous dominant. You're also seeing little a times little a giving you a homozygous recessive. And then you have big A little a here and here. So that is a heterozygote. Uh, and then these three have the positive phenotype because, you know, a big A is dominant to little a. And then uh, this right here has the second phenotype that is a recessive phenotype. That's pretty straightforward and that just comes straight from Mendel's laws. So anytime you have two heterozygotes together, uh, like crossing together, you have two possible phenotypes and three possible genotypes. What I did now is I derived how that formula would change in every possible condition. So let's look at these three. Um, here we have what would happen if you have a homozygote times a homozygote and then every time uh, given that they're different so this these are homozygous dominant and this is homozygous recessive you end up with the heterozygote and there's only one possible genotype that can come from that so that's one possible phenotype also remember that if uh, let's say it was dominant dominant times dominant dominant so you had two homozygous dominants cross together then the genotype that comes from that is it's just homozygous dominant but it's still one phenotype and one genotype that's why I didn't make more than one uh, listing for this kind of cross so one phenotype one genotype and then for if you were to cross a heterozygote times uh, either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive um, the number of genotypes stays the same, but the number of phenotypes changes. So let's have a look at that. Uh, here I've crossed a heterozygote times a homozygote dominant. So there's your heterozygote, homozygote dominant. These two right here, big A, big A, and big A, big A, uh, those are going to be your dominant, uh, homozygous dominant, and then these are going to be heterozygotes. So you have two genotypes. Now, there's only one phenotype that comes from that because the heterozygote has the same phenotype as the homozygous dominant that comes from this cross. Now, if you cross the heterozygote times the homozygous recessive, the only thing that changes is the number of phenotypes. It's, it essentially looks just like this cross, only instead of uh, homozygous dominant, you're generating homozygous recessive in the next generation. Uh, you can see how that works and you know that uh, here this is one phenotype and then this would give you the second phenotype, that recessive phenotype. So hopefully all four of those conditions make sense and then we're going to look at a problem and see how that would apply. Let's say you have this question here that asks you how many possible phenotypes and possible genotypes are possible from the following cross. 
and here we have this uh, for loci cross. Um, so it, it looks like a like a big thing. It looks like it's gonna be really complicated, but let's address each one at a time. First of all, homozygous dominant times homozygous recessive. That's that first case right here. Homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive. So then what I've done is uh, I have a phenotype and a genotype uh, formula. And then that first square tells us that there's one phenotype and one genotype. So I've got one and one. Next, look at how uh, the next cross is going to be uh, heterozygote at B with the homozygote dominant at B. That's that second case. Just bring that number down, one and two. So one phenotype, two genotypes. So one phenotype, two genotypes. Look at D. Uh, at D, we have a heterozygote crossed with the homozygote recessive. That's the third case. So there's two phenotypes and two genotypes. Put that into the formula, two and two. And lastly, you have a heterozygote times a heterozygote. That's that very same kind of cross that we talked about in the very beginning. And then you know that the formulas are two and three. So at every loci, you have a number that goes along with it. So there's four loci involved here, A, B, D, and E. And we have four factors, one, two, three, four. Uh, these numbers are again coming from that table and at the end you want to know how many possible phenotypes and genotypes are possible from the cross so you just multiply all these numbers together four phenotypes is the end result and then 12 genotypes now it's probably not recommended that you memorize all these numbers don't do that what you should do is you should know how to get these ratios out so you understand by the laws of a Punnett square that you know how to make a Punnett square then you know how many phenotypes are going to come out from this by just looking at the results and you know the number of genotypes that are going to come from this one two three right so you should be able to generate these numbers from scratch once you generated those numbers from scratch you can fill this kind of formula in and you can answer the, the questions that ask you how many possible phenotypes and genotypes can come from any given cross. This formula, you could potentially have like 20 loci and this formula would still work. Just, it's a good formula to know and it just comes from the basic laws of Punnett squares. So, hope that helps.